Welcome everyone back to World of Warcraft and the new 7.2.5 patch. With this patch is the release of the new scenario involving Chromie. You can see this sort of as a, an involvement of the Withered scenario. It's a solo scenario, you have to go through do a bunch of your own stuff, but it's a bit more polished than the original Withered one, and you don't strictly have to be tank, you can do this as healer and DPS as well, so there's not a weird imbalance there like there was in the previous one. So the aim of the scenario is to finish all 8 objectives within the 15 minute time frame. And you can extend this 15 minute time frame by collecting Sands of Time to either increase the amount of time you got or to do some objectives for you without having to do them yourself. So there's various different bonuses there that you can get. The The way it's set out is that if you fail, Kirby is able to rewind time and you basically try again but you retain all of your knowledge from the previous time. So you have to do a few runs to sort of ascertain some some snippets of knowledge to figure out what's happening in certain areas. And then on repeat runs, you can skip a lot of the busy work because you already know what you're doing in that area. So the first four objectives are the Dragon Shrines or in the Dragon Blight area. And you pretty much have to go into these and kill the enemies in the area to either loot some item or to discover some secret. The first one here is the Azure Dragon Shrine. What you do here is you kill all these mana raids, all these mana worms, and you loot these items off them. When you get 50 of these items, you can combine these, and when you combine them, you get a small item that starts a quest, and that reveals the location of a hidden Void Lord in the area. And killing the Void Lord is the objective of this shrine. So after you've already collected these 50 items for the first time, on repeat visits, you already know the location of the Void Lord, so Chromie will prompt you to go straight there, and skip the busy work of killing the elementals. So on your first time through the scenario, you can maybe do about three of these shrines, and then on repeat visits, you can clear these first three with a lot more speed, because you already know where stuff is. The Void Gargantuan himself is pretty straightforward. He just drops these silence fields on the ground, so you want to try and drop them at the edge, kite him in a big circle, and not much else to it besides that. I'm playing with this as tank spec, so most of the abilities are pretty unthreatening to me anyway, but I'd reckon even as DPS or healer, these probably aren't going to do very much to you. He doesn't have a great deal of damage behind them. The next shrine is one of the more time consuming ones. This is the Emerald Dragon Shrine. The objective in this one is to kill these Lashers and these Sky Talons, and you loot the Twisted Fibers and the Emeraldine Plumes from them, and you combine these to make Emerald Dream Catchers. And if you use these dream catchers near one of the ancients, then you'll go into the Emerald Nightmare and you'll reveal some creatures that you have to slay. And you do this for all three of the ancients, and it reveals the location of a hidden satyr. On repeat visits, as before, you can just go straight to the satyr and you don't have to repeat this. The satyr himself is located just underneath the Dragon Claw at the north of the shrine here. He doesn't really have very many abilities to speak of, he has a frontal attack, he can simply dodge, he has a stacking poison, and he has a sleep ability that's interruptible. If you don't interrupt it, you'll be put to sleep for 5 seconds, so it's in your best interest to make sure he doesn't cast that. The third of the dragon shrines is the ruby dragon shrine. The point of this one is to go around and kill three of the elites, the sort of named commanders in the area. The first one here is on the south side, this is Earl is the Death Rider. He's surrounded by a couple of skeletons, don't really do very much. Again, I'm playing tank spec, so it's kind of hard for me to gauge whether or not the damage is high, but you can see from me that I didn't really take very much. However, he does have this necrotic strike, which makes you take more physical damage, so if you group up a lot of skeletons with him at the same time, it could end up hurting a little bit. Regardless, I quickly dispatched of him, and I picked up the soul crystal fragment, and you can collect three of these in this shrine to reveal the final boss. The next mini boss you want is on the west side here. It's this Elendriel Graveborn. It's the Banshee. Again, not really very, very mechanics. Pretty low HP pool. You can kill her relatively easy and collect your next fragment. The final rare in this area is in the northern area. It's this Fester Bloat, the large abomination. Very, very simple again. It's a bit more HP than the previous ones, but overall it's just not a difficult challenge at all. You just nuke him down, Chromie helps you a bit, and you collect your next fragment from him. Once you have all of these fragments, you can enter the tree in the middle of the shrine. 
and Chromie will reveal a Lich for you. The Lich has a slowing effect, so if you have Blessing of Freedom like I do, you can cast it on yourself to suppress the slowing effect for a little while, increase your DPS. Additionally, he'll try and cast an Ice Block on Chromie. You can break her out so she can continue to help you with DPS, or you can ignore her, which not really a great deal of reason to do. It'll just make the boss kill take a bit longer, but if you do happen to ignore her, she isn't going to die in there. She'll be okay, but she won't be able to help you in any way. So the final of the four Dragon Shrines is the Obsidian Dragon Shrine. You have to go all the way inside here. On subsequent visits, you don't have to go in and you can just deal with it from outside. But at least on the first time through, you have to go all the way in. And you'll notice there are these smoldering constructs and the smoldering skeletons. The constructs do a fair amount of damage, so you have to be aware of them. Don't pull too many. The skeletons, however, are just AoE fodder. Essentially in this one, you want to fight your way all the way to the back of the place. And there is a large enemy that looks a bit like Myrogar there. And this charred-born Goliath, he's a little bit more challenging than the previous sort of rare elites. But overall, he's pretty straightforward. You just want to watch out for the boulders because they can knock you back. And you can get hurled into the lava, which hurts quite a lot. The calcified axe is just a spin. However, I found it wasn't really very necessary to move out of the way because the damage was very small. And the earth spike is interruptible. So overall, it's just a matter of avoiding the boulders. Not really anything else here that can damage you in any major way. When you finish off this guy, Chromie will reveal the location of a Dreadlord heading outside. There is a shorter route back here. If you just hug the south hand path, you can get out of the shrine more quickly. However, you can't take this route on the way in as it involves a large drop and there's no way to get up there. Maybe if you're a demon hunter, you can like double jump up or something or use some sort of disengage, but I don't believe you can walk right up. So the Dreadlord has quite a small HP pool. He has a frontal carry and swarm ability, which leaves a dot on you. You can move out of the way and make sure you don't aim it at Chromie because she won't move out of the way and she'll take a pretty significant hit from it. Additionally, he has this ability where he calls down an Infernal. It stuns you for two seconds and the Infernal just hits you a little bit, but the damage is pretty light. And by this point, you're close to finishing off the Dreadlord anyway, so the Infernal is mostly ignorable. And that's the four initial Dragon Shrines. Once you clear these, you'll loot these um, Chrono Shards that let you open up additional portals to the next four zones. And the next four zones are a little bit more complicated than the Dragon Shrines, take a little bit more time. However, the same concept applies that on subsequent visits you can sort of skip parts and you can look ahead and do things ahead of time to save yourself a bit of time. The first of these is the War for Anderhal. As you zone in here, you meet the other time version of Chromie at the door here. You can pick up a quest from her which awards the Sands of Time on completion, so it's worth just spending a couple of seconds to grab that. As you zone out here, Chromie sort of bugs out a little bit and you get stuck in combat with a lot of the mobs in the area, which is a bit weird, I'm not really sure why it happens, but just quickly round up three or four of them and just AoE them down so you can get out of combat and get back on your mount. The objective here is to defeat the Horde Cannon, and the cannon is protected by a damage reduction shield and an electromagnetic shield which makes you miss on your attacks. There are various rares throughout the area and you have to determine which of these you need to kill to disable the shield as they all drop special items that you can use to interact with the environment in some way. The first one you want to go for is this apothecary here. He'll drop a poison vial which lets you strip the cannon of his armor. Additionally you'll see these death guard war captains roaming the area. If you can AoE any of these down whilst you're killing other bears, it's worthwhile as they drop um, an explosive munitions which you can use to damage the cannon for 15% of its HP. So if you can kill 7 of these as you're going around the area, then you can just use the explosives to take down the cannon without having to DPS it yourself. The next target you want to go for is on the right hand side, way over towards the farm area. This is Ruby Skizzlevolt. He has a couple of high damaging abilities, so you really want to be careful. There's a channeled lightning attack, which deals very heavy damage over time. However, it's interruptible. And there's a cast time knockback. It's not interruptible, however, you can move out of the way. In addition, there are a lot of these war captains through the area. So I usually made an effort to just gather up, say, seven of them, or six, depending on if you got one near the apothecary, and just AoE them down at the same time with my TPS cooldowns. As you get to the cannon, you can use the Lightning Absorption Capsule from the Gnome and you can use the Armor Melting Potion 
and then just toss your explosives at it to nuke it down. If you're short explosives, you can just get in there and hit it yourself for a bit of damage. It doesn't take a great deal of time to kill, however, if you have zero explosives, it does have a very high HP pool. After that's done, you can fly back to the way you came in, and don't forget to turn in your quest to crawl me at a time, and you get this bonus Sands of Time, which we'll talk about a bit later. Next to these portals is the Burning of Mount Hygel, and this directs you to a small zone, not very much here, however it's sort of surrounded in fire elemental enemies. If you run forward you'll find a wounded Chromie, and it starts a, a wave based offence thing. You pretty much just want to nuke through all of these waves. Chromie will stun the waves as they approach, which can help if you're squishy, however if you're trying to round them all up it actually gets a bit annoying and makes it take a lot more time. So. It's kind of up to you whether or not you like this, but there's not really any way you can prevent her doing it as far as I can tell. The first two waves are just these Seething Power Lords and this Searing Overlord. They're very very harmless overall, you can just AoE them down together. After you kill these, you're met with a Named Mob. It's a giant fire elemental, it's kind of like the ones that you fought in Firelands in Molten Core. He'll silence you occasionally and he'll spawn an Ad. Just nuke down the Ad and continue to DPS him. Really the Ad has very very little HP, like one focus spell at it will kill it. And the Fire Lord himself is pretty low health as well, so it's not a great deal of trouble there. If you're lucky, he'll drop a Sands of Time. The next wave is quite high damage, it's a bunch of these Blazing Phoenixes. Because I'm playing tank spec, I sort of make an effort to round all of them up at once. However, if you're playing DPS, I really wouldn't advise this, because they do quite a lot of damage, and either you'll die or Chromie will die. However, I just pop my DPS cooldowns, round them all up. Just cleave a bit with Consecration of Ender Shield and just heal myself and Chromie so neither of us die. If she dies, then the scenario is over. If you die, you get ported back to her Mist Temple and you can continue, but it's a big time loss. After these are dead, you're met with this Fiery Behemoth. They're very, very simple, just got a large amount of HP. Just nuke him down, interrupt his Fire Nova. He'll drop a little Volcano on the ground, you just move out of that or you take some ticking damage. However, it's a pretty low amount of damage. Again, most of the stuff in here, it's not very complicated, you just have to perform a few simple mechanics and just do it quickly. Now the third Chrono Portal here is one that can make or break your runs, and this is the Culling of Strathom. This one takes an insane amount of time. Of the 15 minutes you're allotted, this single portal can take upwards of 7-8 to eight minutes to complete. It involves a lot of fetch quests. You talk to the bartender here, he sends you to fetch a bunch of stuff. You fetch stuff, bring it back to him, he tells you to bring flowers to some women running the orphanage, and then Arthas shows up and she gets angry and she wants you to get a gun so she can shoot Arthas I guess, I don't know. I have trouble imagining how the timeline would have turned out if this orphanage woman had just shot Arthas in the head, but that's kind of what she aims to do, so you have to run away, buy a gun for her, buy her some bandages, run back, give her that, run back to the guy at the inn, and you can already see this is taking a whole lot of time. On subsequent visits, you can just visit a vendor and buy all of the items you need for the three quests all at once. However, even with this method, this portal still takes an inordinate amount of time compared to the others. It was like this on PTR as well, and I kind of suspected that they might shorten it a little bit. However, it seems like it's gone live like this. So, unless you get one of the zone skip items that I'll talk about a bit later, then this portal is a major, major time sink. So after you do all of these fetch quests, you'll get a key to the town hall and you can run all the way down there and open up the town hall and you can go through here, much like the route you take through the Culling of Strathome dungeon. As you get through here, you're met with all these risen zombies. They're very low HP, however you can't really just run past them because Chromie will lag behind and try to kill them and she'll just get herself murdered by them. So you kind of have to escort her and make sure that she's not getting into trouble because if she dies then the scenario is over. Just trace the route through the old Culling of Strathom dungeon, exact same method as before, and you get all the way to the end here. You have to fight this Crypt Lord. As before, he is very simple, he doesn't really have very many abilities or mechanics, and you shouldn't really have any trouble killing him, you just have to make sure you're doing it quickly. The final of these four Chrono Portals is the Well of Attorney, and this one's pretty straightforward. You just zone in, you find the Wounded Chromie here. Your current time Chromie picks her up to help her, and you have to escort her through the entire zone. The way I usually do this is just to hug the right hand wall, and you pretty much have to kill the Doom Guards that get in your way. You can mostly avoid the Abyssals if you're a bit lucky, 
However, sometimes Chromie lags behind and pulls them. And as you're going through here, you'll be pulling these fell stalkers pretty much the whole time as they continuously spawn and run towards you. None of this stuff has too much HP though, so you can kind of just run through and you cut all down as you go. As you get all the way through, you'll reach another portal. You just click this to zone into the next part of this zone. The next part here is Ashara's Palace, and you just run up the ramp to the left and continue around the path there. As a tank, I just sort of ran straight through and pulled everything. If you're DPS or healer spec, you don't want to do this. It's going to hurt you too much. And even as tank spec, it's pretty painful. So if you're not entirely comfortable with your class, I wouldn't recommend doing it either. You can take the time to kill out the groups one by one. It'll only take you like an extra one minute or so. At the end, you reach this sort of Doomguard boss. He's pretty straightforward. He'll summon these lines of ghosts that just run across the room. Just stay out of the way from them, very, very simple. And he'll fixate this laser on either you or Chromie. Just make sure that you're not standing in it if it's on her, and make sure you point it away if it's on you. Overall, the damage from it is pretty low though, so even if she does get hit, it's not really a big deal. If you opted to run all the way through, you'll have the mobs approaching you. So want to make sure you aggro them off Chromie so she doesn't die, and pop some defensive cooldowns so you don't die as well. You can AoE them all down pretty easily. And with all of them dead, you just run up the stairs and click the portal. And that takes you back to Wormrest Temple. And that's the 8 out of 8 done. So at this stage, you're probably thinking, how do I do all 8 of these in 15 minutes? This seems impossible. And you're right, without any of the extra bonuses, it is impossible. However, we have these Sands of Times that we can use to our advantage. Now, you loot these from the bosses, you loot them from rare, you can loot them from chests. You get them from the quests that you complete in the scenario. When you use one of these, you'll be given a choice of two bonuses. Now, some of the bonuses are pointless, like extra run speed. Not very useful since you spend a lot of time on your mount. And stuff like a bunch of gold, like 30 gold, it's not going to help you. But some of them are really, really beneficial. And you can get things such as drakes that will go and clear a dragon shrine for you, so you don't have to. You can loot various items that work inside the chrono portals. So you can get, say, a smoldering core, which lets you skip straight to the end in Hygel. You can get a Stratholme gate key, which lets you skip to the end in Stratholme. And you can get, a, I think it's a Scenarian Peace Treaty or something to that effect, which stops the fighting in the Anderhal fight and lets the scenario end there instantly. And I think there's one for Well of Eternity. I don't believe I ever got it, so I couldn't tell you exactly what it does. But there's probably something to that effect that just helps you get through there quickly. So what I found is with the current level of Chromie buffs on the first day of the scenario, the Stratholme gate key is completely mandatory. If you don't get the Stratholme key, there's absolutely no way you can finish on time. During my run, this is the only buff I got and I narrowly, narrowly finished on time. I had very, very little time left. So... If you don't get the Stratholme gate key and you only have Stratholme left, it's, I don't think it's too realistic that you can do it on time because it just takes so much time. Unless you've got skips from various other places and lots of time left just for Stratholme. But certainly the RNG on getting the gate key definitely helps you out. You can, however, mitigate the RNG by making sure that you maximise the amount of sands of time that you loot. So as you go around here, there are numerous chests and rares. So around the Emerald Dragon Shrine and the Azure Dragon Shrine, there are two Magnetor rares that you can kill, which will drop between one and three sands each. And straight below Wormrest Temple, there is a third Magnetor rare, which also drops these sands at times. In each of the Dragon Shrines, there are two chest spawn locations, which can be randomly there or not there. I'm not going to list all of them, you can probably find them on Wowhead or Reddit or something like that. But if you get a list of those, then you can quickly check these locations as you go. Additionally, in all four of the subzones, there are also chests that can spawn. Some of them aren't really worth going for, like upstairs ones in Stratholme. But certainly in something like Hygel, which is a very, very small zone, you can check all of the chest spawn locations really quickly. Okay, so with that, let's have a look at the run where I eventually managed to finish it all in time. So the first thing to do at the start here is to pick a quest up from either of the four of the dragons here. It'll 
task you with defeating one of the four shrines just to earn a little extra reward. So immediately I'm flying down to the bottom of the temple and checking for the Magnetar rare. I do see him right at the corner there. I decide it's worth going over just to kill him. So I jump down, quickly kill him. However, I believe I only loot one sands of time, so perhaps wasn't quite worth the time. But it's worth doing anyway because you just need to maximise your RNG and hope that you get lucky and you loot, say, two to three sands instead. So I fly away from there, I proceed over to the Emerald Dragon Shrine. On the way, I'm looking out for the extra Magnetar rare that patrols around here. And just as I approach the shrine, I do spot him in the distance. So I'm going over to kill him. And again, this was an unlucky run for me. I looted one sands from this guy as well. But regardless, it's still worth doing. Once he's down, I jump down into the shrine. I go immediately to the claw because I know the satyr is going to be there. Chromie reveals him and I'm just popping cooldowns and nuking him down. I use drums here because I know I can use them twice through the scenario. So using them early is good. And just unload everything on this guy. Not very dangerous, just avoid the mechanics. Nuke him down as fast as possible, maximize DPS where you can. That means you have to use drums and potions to meet the timer, then so be it. After this guy's dead, I'm just checking in the water and off to the side for chests. You can see the locations on my minimap with waypoints. I do manage to find one of the Sands of Time chests in the water here, so that's a nice bonus for me. After I've looted this, I am heading towards the Azure Dragon Shrine. I know there's another Magnetor rare on the way here, so I'm keeping an eye out for him. I spot him as I approach and just drop down, spend some time killing him for the extra sands. Once at the Dragon Shrine, you can fly directly to where the Void Gargantuan is. We revealed him in the previous attempt, so we know that he's going to be here every time. And as before, just pop DPS cooldowns wherever you have, any potions, etc. And you come down and be as fast as possible about it. I'm quickly double checking here for chests as well. I have the waypoints marked on the map. However, I'm unlucky here and don't find any of the chests in this zone. So with that, I continue on to the Ruby Dragon Shrine. As I land here, I manage to spot one of the chests. So I kill a couple of the mobs in front of here just so I can get some space and manage to loot this chest and get some bonus sands. It's always worth doing. It seems like it wastes a bit of time, but it's, it's certainly worth doing because the bonus items from sands are just worth so much. And because I've been here before, I know immediately to go into the tree to fight the Lich. I'm popping DPS cooldown as before. I'm casting freedom on myself to suppress the slowing effect and I'm breaking Chromie out of the ice block whenever possible. I've been a bit unlucky thus far. I haven't managed to loot any of the drakes that clear the shrines for you, so I'm having to progress all the way to the fourth shrine to clear that manually. However, I have managed to amass a little bit of extra time through the Sands of Time bonuses. You can see the buff at the top is eight stacks currently, which means I have an extra 80 seconds. So as I've been here before, I immediately go to the Dreadlord. Don't need to go inside this time. You just nuke him down, avoid the carrion swarm, point it away from Chromie, and that's essentially it. There's no reason to go inside. There are chests that spawn inside, however I don't believe these ones are worth it. So when that's done, I choose to go to Mount Hyjal next. However, I'm just turning in my Sands of Time quest here for the extra 3 bonus. The reason I do Hyjal first is because it's the shortest one, and I'm hoping to loot some extra sands, and maybe get a bit lucky and get one of the items to skip the other parts. So, I'm just trying to minimize the RNG here and maximize the amount of sands I've got so I can definitely get the skip items that I need. I just progressed through these waves as usual. I did get a little bit lucky here. I managed to loot the Time Loss Keepsake box, which is the one that has one of the skips for the four Chrono Portals. I'm secretly hoping here that it's the one for the Strathome skip. And fortunately for me, it was the Strathome skip item. If I hadn't loaded this, I wouldn't have managed to finish on time. So just emphasizes that the Strathome skip item is really, really important because that one just takes so much more time compared to the others. On the way out, I notice a chest up in the corner here. I'm not completely sure if this was worth it, because there was quite a lot of mobs guarding this one. However, I just went for it anyway. I thought maybe I'll get lucky and get another skip item. I was aware of the fact that my run wasn't going as well as it could be. I hadn't found any of the Dragon Shrine skips, and I'd only found one of the Chrono Portal skips. So I just wanted to go for the chests. Only one Sands of Time, pretty unlucky, and no skip. I decided to go to Culling a Strathom next. I know I had the skip item, so I can get straight to the end and get some extra sands. Maybe I can get a Well of Eternity or an Anderhall skip. And to use this one, you just go to the left here and open up the extra gate. You'll be familiar with the layout if you've run Old Strathom, which is the Market Row gate. 
and the sledge is kept straight to the end of Stratholme to kill the Crypt Lord outright without having to do any of the other busy work. After this, I opt for Anderhall because this one is actually very fast to tank. I know a lot of people have been saying this one takes some time. My advice is if you have a prot spec here, use it because you can do this one very, very quickly as tank spec just by AoEing all of the captains down at once. So, as before, I know exactly which NPCs to go for. I know I need the Apothecary and I need the Engineer. I'm going for the Engineer first and just rounding up as many of the captains as I can. I know that seven of them are required at most, however I can do it with less if there's not an easy AoE range. So I pull a whole bunch of these and I just make sure that I'm popping defensive cooldowns as the gnome channeling on you is pretty high damage. Overall once you get going though it's not bad. Uh, prop paladins are pretty good at cleaving because they've your shield. I also have the legendary legs which just means I can shred these down really really quickly and efficiently. With the gnome dead I'm going for the apothecary next and she has some poison vials she'll throw out which deal pretty heavy damage and she can put a damage reduction buff on herself. You can fight her inside to prevent patrols from getting you, however the lack of space can be a bit of a problem when she throws these volatile vials as they do quite a bit of damage. One of the advantages of fighting her inside is that you can line of sight her from Chromie and force Chromie to run inside so she isn't ninja pulling random crap, which she actually did for me, she pulled an extra captain that I didn't intend on pulling, however he was just easy to cleave down. But if you're playing a bit more of a squishy spec, you might want to be careful here. After that's done, I just fly down to the cannon, I use all of the items on it to disrupt the shield and the plating, and then just toss the explosives at it in sequence. Seven of them gets it down, and six of them leaves it with only 10% AHP, which you can easily nuke down with your own abilities. After this, you can turn your quest in at Chromie, get it one extra tons of time. Maybe you get a final skip item if you're lucky. However, just the chance of getting an extra 10 to 30 seconds added onto the timer is worth it when all it takes is just stopping to talk to an NPC for 3 seconds. So I was a bit unlucky, I didn't get any extra skips here. As I approached the final challenge, the Will of Eternity, I was using my extra time. So I was trying to be a bit fast here. I wanted to try and sneak through past these Doom Guards. However, Chromie kind of screwed it up. She got aggro on one of the Fell Hounds and she stayed in place and didn't move. Which meant that one of the Abyssals started patrolling close. And I knew that if she died the scenario was over so I had to go back and save her which involved AoEing a whole lot of mobs that I wasn't intending to kill. The damage from them can be quite high if you're not careful. However, again, I am playing tank spec, so most of this is relatively trivial, and I can just group up stuff and AoE it down pretty efficiently. In the next section, I did my usual of mounting up and just running through. It's important that you stay mounted, because if you dismount, then Chromie will stop to fight. And if she stops to fight, she'll get aggro and die. However, if you stay mounted, then she won't fight and she'll just run to keep up with you. So for that reason, I just heal her up before we go to make sure she's healthy. And just run all the way through. She is taking some damage because she aggroes random stuff. And because I have her in tank spec, so she takes constant ticking damage. However, she'll be okay. It's better to run through and commit to it than it is to try and dismount and heal her and end up with her aggroing a bunch of stuff. The usual thing at the end here, I was just AoEing everything down with the boss. I knew my time was really short here, so as the boss was dying I made sure to pick up the sands of time that he drops in order to get the chance for bonus time. I was lucky and did get the bonus time, which I very very desperately needed. If I hadn't managed to get a bit lucky there then that would have been the end of the run. However, I got the 30 seconds extra, which was the best outcome and it helped me just push to the end. So overall, the scenario is very doable without max upgrades on Chromie. Um, I didn't even have that great luck. Sure, I got the Strathdome skip, but I had to do the other seven zones manually. Usually you can hope to get, I'd say, two skips on a good run. I only had one, but I got a lot of extra time, and I managed to cheese some mobs by being tank spec. So, very, very close at the end there, but I did manage to finish on time. So thanks for watching, and good luck in your own attempts at completing this. Rather fun scenario on time.